What is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and today's show is going to be a short one. We're going to get right to the point. We'll be right back right after this. Stick around at the end of the show. I'll talk, tell you all about Energy, the solar generator that runs my show. All right, let's get right into it. What is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. First off, I want to remind you that every article that I have pulled, and some of these are actually older articles, all the way dating back to 2002, about uh, a certain subject, and that is, of course, resources and the planet. Now, a lot of the times uh, over the, the last four years that I've been covering some of these things, uh, a lot of lies have been kind of uncovered. And it's kind of funny when you go back before a lot of the things come out, everyone says what the truth actually is, but they say, oh, no, and they just tell you a lie and they just keep lying to you. And everybody's like, no, it seems like it makes so much logical sense if this was the answer. Uh, there's a lot of things in specific just since 2019 that people said in the very beginning that they said six months later they said a year in fact people were taken off of the uh, platforms and things for saying things uh, that ended up being now confirmed fact so that has happened a lot and just in the last couple years but we're talking about history uh, in fact I, I think one of the funniest things is it, there might be a quote from uh, Mike Tyson uh, saying you know history is essentially the lies that we all agreed to uh, believe right so as far as uh, what is what is going on, uh, it, it we all have an intuition that something is going wrong, and of course that intuition is usually right. But unfortunately, we have a system that covers up all sorts of things. So to get to the point, um, I want to I want to throw out a question, and I, I also want to tell you kind of what I have been hearing a whole lot of uh, that the planet is possibly running out of resources, and that is what the undertone of all of this is. And really, it comes down to money, and it comes down to cover-ups, and it com comes down to a whole lot of stuff going on. And that's why we'll be going all the way back to 2002 when there were things being said, and now those things that they said we needed to do are happening. So just to go into the, the general thing here, uh, of course, ma make sure to go over to the website. You'll have a full bibliography of all of the website, all of the, the sources I use for today's show. Go to uh, Earth Collapsing, The Biggest Secret in History, 2040, Running Out of Time, and then you'll find all of these different pieces here. Uh, not On top of that, you can actually sign up to win an off-grid bag, a $380 bag that stops people from tracking, tracing, and it protects your devices from EMPs and CMEs. So make sure to go over and get that and you can get all of the sources. So I want to bring up, uh, again, there, there are tons of back and forths on this. And if you didn't know, a lot of people, in fact, that I've spoken to uh, did not realize that there's been this debate for a long time if or whether we are running out of resources. Now, first of all, <clears throat> you see all of the shortages now and everybody can point blame to wherever they want. But when it really comes down to it, since 2019, we have all realized that something is going on and it's very, very, uh, it, it's it's like this ominous feeling of of something is, is bad that is happening right now and, and worse is coming, right? Most of you guys agree with that. Most of you told me you feel the same. As far as uh, this is from the J Post, again, this is the all, all of these articles are to put together kind of uh, a thought here. Now, it says a recent study based based on computational models, claims that within the next decade, global human warf uh, uh, welfare will begin to decline. The study was written by Gaia Harrington, a sustainability and dynamic system ana analysis researcher at the consulting firm KPMG. According to the study, simply uh, simple supply and demand raises the following problem. If the world's economy and population continues at its current growth rate, the world's natural resources will eventually run out. Now, of course, you've seen these arguments, and by the way, the oil companies have been a huge part of all sorts of different uh, debates, and in fact, uh, going back, I was just talking to my friend Jack about 
about how he he watched a documentary about the electric car industry and how uh, in the very beginning of it, before Tesla was around and all of this, uh, the electric car was, they were trying to get them out. But uh, again, there were a bunch of scandals that happened. And now we know that oil companies had a big part in why electric cars didn't take off beforehand or uh, water or hydro powered cars or all these different things. And this goes back years. Uh, this go, In fact, it possibly goes back decades or even half a century. We don't we don't know how far back it actually goes that they were holding these this technology back, but it seems like there was right. And now we know that there were cover ups and certain things that were done. I will ask you guys a question. I can talk to any reasonable person and say, hey, do you think that there is corruption? And they'll say yes. Uh, is there cover ups? They'll say yes. Uh, do you think that big corporations actually pay to have people unalived? Uh, for a purpose and most people will say yes but at the same time with everything that's going on right now and when people just mysteriously end up you know gone they don't question it and that's what I don't understand so as uh, as far as uh, you'll see videos I actually just watched a, a, a video on a, a PhD scholar saying uh, basically uh, trying to go over the myth of stuff running out, uh, of Earth running out of resources. And basically the claim is that we're running out of oil, we're running out of water. Uh, again, there's multiple pieces here saying we'll run out of water by 2040, by uh, natural resources by 2050. And just think about that, really absorb if we are truly, if, if there's a cover up and, and if we are truly running out of all of these different things, then, uh, of course, you would think that the world would need to change pretty rapidly in the next coming decades. Like maybe we're having a heyday and partying up until the last minute or something, right? No matter what you believe, I, I get it. Just let me get to this point. So as far as this PhD guy that uh, it was supposed to be a debunk video, what it ended up being is saying, uh, he gave an example. He said, well, you know, originally when we uh, started the telephone system, we had copper wire and it used a whole lot of it. And to do the whole system of telephones across the country and across the world, they said, well, we might not actually have enough copper to do that. Well, instead of using up all the copper for th this, they said, well, we, then we found substitutes like fiber optic, which uses sand and things like this. So basically they were saying, well, yeah, it would deplete, but what we did is we found a substitute. And what his argument is, is it's partially a myth that oil will, will uh, run out. And he even said he uses the proof that back in 1882, we thought there were however many, six, you know, 60 million gallons of, of, of oil. And then by 1908, we, f we uh, figured out, or scientists said that there were like uh, 100 million. And by uh, 2000 and, uh, or by 1968 or something, they estimated that there was uh, 100 billion bar uh, barrels of gasoline. And then in 2008, which I believe, and uh, maybe it was just really old 2008 was the last time they told us that there were over a trillion barrels of of uh, gasoline or oil and I'm thinking in my head uh, and he, basically his argument for the oil was well as uh, supply and demand goes up for oil basically what they do is now it's more profitable and they have more reason to drill other places now there are several pieces that actually say it says, uh, from petrol to water, here's how long Earth's resources will last. Now, this actually had, uh, this is if, this is a cool article to go over, and I tried to look up every single one of these and find it uh, based and try to see if it was uh, confirmed. And many of these are confirmed as far as uh, what is actually going on. It says, if we compare Earth's history to a calendar year, modern humans have been around for 37 minutes and have managed to use up one-third of the Earth's natural resources in the last 0.2 seconds. Now, by the way, there's a whole argument about who's causing it. I'm not getting into that because I think there's a greater point here once you find out what's going on. It says, Earth will run out of water by 2040, or this is what some think, right? It says it takes 24,000 liters of water to produce just one kilo of chocolate and more than 15,000 liters of water to produce one kilo of beef. This is the argument for, for fake uh, meats and all of this other stuff. The cotton for a t-shirt will require almost 3,000 liters of water. Uh, it says that essentially, although our planet is 70% water, only 2.5% of that 70% is fresh water, which is useful to humans. Most of this 2.5% is in the form of ice or permanent snow cover. 
And then it says, too, there will be no more rainforest in 2100. And a lot of people have seen this statistic that essentially almost half by, and by now has actually already been destroyed or died. And it says in just 40 years, 1 billion hectares, or hectares of forests have been cut down worldwide. That's an area bigger than Xi's country. It says rainforests help in stabilizing the climate. Uh, of course, with the current rate of deforestation, the world's rainforest will be gone by 2100. It says says there will be no more fish in the ocean by 2048. These are all claims, right? It says the world ocean could be virtually emptied of fish by 2048. The reason? Overfishing. If that was not bad enough, the world has overproduced more than 9 billion tons of plastic since production. This is, these are all claims. And, and by the way, the point is, is golden here. It says... Uh, f more than half of the coral reefs are already lost. This is something I personally uh, have verified through my friend who actually does the research and goes and dives and looks at the coral reef. I've talked about it for now months. And th this part, at least, that I can verify is happening, and it's happening at a, a, an accelerating and scary rate. Uh, uh, of course, not to even mention all of the animal die-offs, all of the magnetic animals that are following our natural uh, poles, uh, they are all messed up. They're just swimming all over the place. They're uh, they're going the wrong routes. They they don't have their uh, natural instincts, or a lot of them are losing it. Uh, hammerhead sharks, which use a magnetic, uh, uh, essentially a magnetic uh, pole to navigate, they are all messed up. They're going in the wrong directions. They're navigating all wrong. So something is going on with that as well. Over four million square kilometers of land is being degraded every year. It says over 90% of the land could become degraded by 2050. Uh, de desertification is a phenomenon that rakes among the greatest environmental challenges of our time, yet most people haven't heard of it yet or don't understand it. And that's the UN. Now, keep in mind, even if you don't believe what they're saying, this these are the, the powers that are actually running this planet. So if they want to move you to a mega city because uh, this is happening or supposedly happening, uh, that's something that you should pay attention to. Oil deposits could be used up by 2052. Now, remember their excuse in saying we're not running out of oil because we can keep looking and digging for it. Well, there's other pieces of information, and, and we're just saying hypothetically if any of this is right, and looking back in history and saying what did they predict way back now, and then what is happening now? Uh, it, as far as they, some scientists say that, uh, of course, fossil fuel extraction could be contributing to by heating the earth from within. Uh, again, this is actually funny enough from the conversation, but uh, this is a conversation that probably wouldn't have happened for decades because of the oil companies. Do you think that this could get any kind of traction with a multi-trillion dollar uh, industry such as the oil phenomena uh, basically shutting it down? So if it was true, remember the almighty dollar is ahead of everything in the entire planet. Everybody is about money and power. This kind of conversation wouldn't have been had. Or even if they questioned it, they, w they always hire their own teams to do studies and they basically uh, pay scientists to come up with a, uh, an answer. Even if it like, goes around the fact, they'll find some pretty way to put a bow on it and say, this isn't happening. And they've been doing that for a long time. I'm not saying that this is happening, but again, uh, they have had a very, uh, very, very uh, solid streak of covering things up and hiring their own firms to investigate. And they have enough money to own the world, so of course. And remember, our entire uh, system right now is based on the petrodollar. And if it is true that something is going on, then they might want to switch us off of that. And if they're switching off of that, that means that the entire world system is based on this one powerful country that's been running stuff forever. And now that system is about to collapse based on debt printed out of fiat money that doesn't have any, uh, basically it's printed with debt attached. It That alone is, is a system that is not uh, something that's working great, right? So the, the, in a matter of time, again, that will collapse. It's an eventual eventuality, kind of like the sun going supernova. We don't know when, but it's going to happen. It, it's impossible not to unless something changes. Um, and as far as now the world is one centimeter uh, Celsius warmer, one degree Celsius warmer than it was pre-industrial times.
Now, I do want to say if they did pull out oil, they say that this is a theory that essentially says that that oil was the insulator between our planet and whatever else outside of it. And that essentially when you take that oil out, it lets more heat escape. That's their argument. And all I'm saying is if this was a true argument or if they had any proof behind it, which, uh, again, they say they have evidence behind this then it would have been covered up for decades and we would have never heard of it. Now, going uh, back, I just want to mention Stephen Hawking's warning before he passed. He says, it's time to get a, the hell off of the planet. It says, we're running out of space and the only places to go are other worlds. Now, you hear Elon Musk saying things like, you know, we actually need to have more children uh, to ensure our survival. Why is he saying things like this? Why did he start SpaceX? Well, I want to I want to go back to a piece that was done in 2002. This is when the internet, you know, uh, or probably AOL Internet, you know, dial up and things were the fastest when we were on Napster and other things. It says Earth's population will be forced to colonize two planets within 50 years if not natural resources continue to be exploited at the current rate, according to a report out this week. A study by the World Wildlife Fund, the WWF, is to be uh, released on Tuesday, warns that the human race is plundering the planet at a pace that outstrips its capacity to support life. Now, I just want to fast forward, look at what Elon Musk, what Jeff Bezos, and what all of the richest people in the world have all of a sudden invested in. It's like overnight, they were like, oh, we want to go uh, colonize the moon and colonize Mars. Now, whether you believe that or either, that's that's up to you. But again, uh, look what is actually happening. This was back in 2002, but I believe before we even had like the Nokia phones. I mean, this was this was this was quite uh, 20 years ago. In fact, yeah, almost exactly uh, 20 years ago. This was before a whole lot of the technology advancements. This is before all of this. And now all of a sudden uh, our plan is to colonize. And then you have Elon Musk doing all these crazy things and uh, and basically trying to get to space, colonize the moon, colonize Mars, terraform Mars, all of this stuff. And he says our only hope for survival is that we all have more children. When others are saying that we're overpopulated, running out of space, maybe he's saying that because, you know, the, your better number of odds uh, or the survival of the fittest or something. He also says our future, uh, that your best bet will to have a guaranteed income, like a welfare type of thing, like a, a, a stipend that you get. And they tell you where you can spend it and what you can spend it on. Now... Of course, Elon Musk is, you know, he's not the bearer of all, but he's connected with the boring company digging uh, tunnels underneath the country all over the place. He's doing SpaceX. He's got Starlink. And, of course, uh, this whole mission to, to the BFR, uh, the big friggin' rocket, to take people to Mars and says uh, all of these crazy things, right? But what I want to point out is what if this is uh, partially true? What if the, the resources are running out? What if them taking oil out of the planet is what has now heated the ocean to over a degree hotter at the very bottom of it? I, the, here's the thing. The most logical uh, reason and the most logical kind of answer would make the most sense. I'm not saying that that's exactly what, what, I, what it is. But again, how many times have we said, oh, no, it seems like it's this, but they're telling us something else. And then all of a sudden it comes out that it is. The problem I have with this is even if there was something massive coming and, of course, the entire, uh, you know, the entire planet has to be basically uh, reset. They wouldn't tell us until last minute. And the very richest and the very most elite people are now uh, leaving their jobs. They're, they're either retiring, they're buying Plan B uh, citizenships all over the world. Uh, they are all ba basically doing prep stuff and, unless they're at the very, very, very top. And in that case, they're already talking to people like Jeff Bezos and uh, Elon Musk to get tickets elsewhere. So what the heck is going on? That's my question. I'm going to talk about this again with, of course, Jacob Israel on tonight's show. What are your thoughts? And again, the articles tonight, these are older. This is not a new thing. Uh, in fact, that article from 2002, it's kind of shocking that uh, nobody was talking about this kind of stuff back then. And now, all of a sudden, you have this huge, huge push. And if you remember just about three or four or five years ago, you had all of a sudden, everybody's going to space. Why? 
everybody was going to the moon. We're sending seeds, uh, basically a Noah's Ark of seeds and DNA samples to the moon. We're sending this to there. It's almost like uh, they're setting up for the end. Tell, you know, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me uh, your opinion about this. I'd love to hear it. This is uh, a thought exercise that I think that people should look at because I believe in a lot of cases, the most logical answer is it. But guess what? There's billions and trillions of dollars behind certain forces that aren't going to tell you or they already lied and they can't admit now that they lied. How would they do that without destroying their reputations or getting sued or this or that? But think about what the rich are doing. Think about what is happening right now. All of this stuff that is happening right now. Uh, Vlad, I don't know. You could find w what reason it is. Maybe he's, maybe uh, legitimately he is you know, going to try to take Europe. Because maybe uh, they're all fighting over resources that we don't even know that the fight begins. Because if we did know that stuff was truly running out, there would be pandemonium on this planet. There's a movie called The Cloverfield uh, Paradox that I watched a couple years ago. And I keep thinking about it. And I'm like... Gosh, what if that was some sort of predictive programming? That the future, everybody would be more concerned about power and about energy and actually having energy. In that movie, you should uh, go peek it out. They basically have a CERN system set up to try to produce power for the world. And if it fails, then the world goes to conflict because essentially uh, that was their last hope for renewable energy. It's not a new idea. But it has been lingering for years. And it seems like there's a lot of forces. When you go in and look into it, there is a lot of money put into, uh, you know, going against the fact that oil hurt anything or whatever. And think about it. That's a trillion, quadrillion dollar business. They are going to do things around it. Uh, they take people out. In fact, I just wanted to say, um, I, I love you guys, oil companies. And <laughs> I'm not saying you did anything wrong. But you guys get my point. What do you think about this? Do you have further things that would uh, push this forward? I'm going to talk about this with, of course, Jacob Israel. We're going to talk about AI. We're going to talk about all sorts of stuff. In the meantime, if you haven't already, make sure to go over and check out our website, marfuglenews.com. You can get all the sources that I use for today's show. And you can go over and get yourself a solar generator. Obviously, things aren't going well, but the reason why we recommend a solar generator is because, one, it's silent. People won't hear it from three blocks away in an SHTF situation. Two, it doesn't take gas, which is now at anywhere from six to $14,000 per gallon. Uh, on top of that, this is a modular system. Uh, the one really thing that sets this part, though, on top of being modular, having some of the fastest input speeds ever, uh, being able to triple uh, and again, add a mod to triple the amount of solar power coming in. It charges any which way. It's flexible. It's modular. And they click together. You can expand up to 96 batteries. On top of all of that, uh, what is great is you're dealing with a, an American company that you actually get somebody here on the phone. Uh, that is a big difference. When you uh, look at some of the competitors, they're all out of uh, another country and you get a call center and you don't get help at all. This is in one of the highest quality solar generators out there. That's why uh, we feel good telling you about it. It is running my entire studio right now. All of my music gear, all my lights, and all of my stuff is on two power bars powered by this and backed up. Uninterrupted, uninterrupted power supply is what is going on here. And that means if I lose power, this show still goes. So make sure to go check it out, especially if you have a small business that's mobile, if you are in construction, or if you are a prepper, this is a must-have. Go to marfugelnews.com slash energy. Make sure to use the code Marfugel. That code Marfugel will get you upwards of $170 off. Thank you guys for watching. Join me on our other channel, Marfugel TV. Our sister channel is going to have Jacob Israel on tonight. And, of course, we're going to have a ton more about everything else going on. Join us there and make sure to share this out with as many friends and family. Ask them the question, what do you think is really going on with all of these shifts and with the shift uh, to essentially change the entire planet? What do you think is actually going on? Is it going to make sense or is it these BS uh, excuses everybody uh, basically divided and distracted and we're completely confused about it? They wouldn't tell us until last minute and then once it's gone, it's gone and then we're screwed. All right, thank you guys and much love. Be safe, be prepared, and Marf out. <laughs>